Brothers, it's easy for commentary purposes. Please understand it. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. Appreciate your generosity. Welcome back to our review series of the October Halloween specials. In this video, we'll be reviewing episode 20 of What's New Scooby Doo, a Scooby Doo Halloween. So then, let's get this party started! Ah, spoiler alert! A Scooby Doo Halloween. Shaggy and Scooby are running away from the swamp creature when. Shaggy tells Scooby to head for the speedboat. They make it past the trap, where Fred, Velma, and Daphne catch the swamp creature, and Shaggy and Scooby hurry Fred, Daphne, and Velma into the mystery machine, telling the officer that it was nice meeting him and they'll do lunch. While driving off, Daphne tells Shaggy and Scooby that they weren't done with their wrap-up, and Shaggy tells her that if they don't hurry, they'll never make it to Velma's Aunt Megan on Evan's house in time for Halloween. Fred comments that it's cool to be in the backseat, and Velma tells Shaggy that Halloween is until tomorrow night. Shaggy replies to her that her aunt and uncle live in Banning Junction, and that it's the place to spend the holiday. Shaggy says it also says that it that they have to be there early so they can beat the crowd. Fred tells Shaggy that he's riding the clutch a bit hard, while well, Shaggy dreams about candy rocking out with Kiss and more candy. Fred advises Shaggy that he might want to just put it in third, and that it's a delicate piece of machinery. While well, Shaggy says that Kiss will be playing at the Masquerade Ball tomorrow night, and he will ask Paul Stanley to sign his forehead. Fred berates Shaggy, saying that he's killing the mystery machine. He and Scooby get out of the front seat and return to the back, where Fred resumes his usual position in the driver's seat. As they driving off, Fred tells the mystery machine that she's a good girl. Daphne tells Velma that it was spooky out there, and Shaggy tells Daphne that it's great. Velma asks Shaggy that he thinks it's great. And Shaggy tells her that it's not regular scary, it's Halloween scary. And bets that they have been working on those creepy fields for weeks. Shaggy and Scooby synchronize their watches. And Shaggy says that the official countdown for Halloween begins and they have 23 hours and 57 minutes until Halloween night. Velma said that she is looking forward to spend time with Aunt Meg and Uncle Evan. Velma also said that they are excited that they are coming and they can't wait to see them, but suddenly Curtis told the gang to freeze and he called them trespassing cowards. When Meg and Evan realized that it was Velma in the game, they basically said false alarm. Velma asked them what's going on and her aunt said that somebody had been slashing and burning the cornfields at night and the police had no clue who's doing it or why. Carter says that it's some dumb teenagers who think it's funny to mess with their livelihoods. And Shaggy agrees with them. When the gang get inside their house, Evan told Velma that she remembers Marcy. And Velma said that it's been so long. And that she hasn't changed at all. Marcy agrees with her. And she said to Velma that she is wearing this exact same outfit. And Meg tells the gang that they picked a great year to be here and that Banning Junction is celebrating 100 years of Halloween anniversary. Uncle Evan also tells the gang that legend has it Hank Banning is due to show up. He tells them that Hank ran the town as mayor for over 30 years, 
until Hipwits got the better of him. Meg tells the gang that he was paranoid and was unfit to serve in office, so the townspeople voted him out. Uncle Evan t also tells the gang that before Hank died on Halloween night, he put a curse on the town so that his spirit would return after 100 years to seek revenge on the town that wronged him. Aunt Meg tells them that most people don't believe it, but they have a good record turnout this year, and folks want to say that there were the legend that was supposed to come true. Shaggy agrees and said that they also want to see Kiss play the Masquerade Ball. Daffy gasps and thinks there's something out the window, and Marcy tells her that it was probably her own reflection. Aunt Meg tells the game that there's another reason why this year was so special, and that Marcy has been crowned this year's corn princess, and that she'll be the queen in the Masquerade Ball. Fred thinks it's neat, and Marcy tells him how retro he is. Uncle Evan tells everyone that they should turn in, and they have a big day tomorrow. Marcy tells Aunt Meg and Uncle Evan that she'll show the gang the rooms, and that she needs her sleep. Suddenly, a black cat appears out the window, and when Scooby growled at it, but after the cat hisses at Scooby, its eyes change to red, scaring Scooby. On that night, something is slashing and burning the cornfields, scaring two civilians away. The next morning at the festival, Scooby is carving a pumpkin with Shaggy's face on it. But as soon as he turned around, he sees Shaggy wearing a mask, and he said that the, he got it at your old costume shop. He also said that he can't wait to go trick-or-treating, and he tells Scooby to think about the candy they'll get in 8 hours and 47 minutes. Aunt Meg tells Daphne that she just loves Halloween, and she remembers their first like it was yesterday. She also tells Daphne that she and Uncle Evan didn't have so their jack-o'-lantern was used. After Daphne angrily watches Marcy teach Fred how to dip an apple in caramel, the balloon pops and the caramel is split, spilled onto Marcy's shirt. Velma tells Aunt Evan that this was incredible, and she can't believe how crowded Banning Junction is. Then Mayor Green appears, and he said that the legend has made this the best turnout in years. And Eldon Reed said that it was too bad that it couldn't happen every year. And Evan introduces Velma and tells them that her and her friends are spending the holidays with them. Then Curtis tells everyone to come quick and it, that it happened again. Aunt Meg asked everyone who would do something like this. And Fred said that this was something strange and only tracks made there were the ones they made. And Velma said that it was impossible and that everything leaves tracks in cornfields, even animals. And Daphne said it was like something dropping down from the sky. Shaggy tells Scooby that it is kind of freaky out there, and Scooby agrees. Then the black cat takes the candy apple, and Shaggy and Scooby try to catch it up top of the water tower, where they see patterns re representing symbols of Halloween. Fred picks up a glove and says, what's a glove doing here? He also said that this water tower hasn't been used for years, and... Shaggy tells Fred to forgot the glove, and he asks him what made these patterns. Suddenly, Agnes appears and tells him that Hank Banning has made these patterns, and that he made a prophecy that there would be signs in the fields foretelling his return. Uncle Evan tells her that it's just ridiculous, and that it's an old legend. Mayor Green also tells her that it's just an old wife's tale to scare the little kids. Agnes tells him that he didn't call it an old wife's tale when he was just encouraging tourists to spend their money to come here, and that the only ones who will survive are those who have prepared. She also tells them to lock themselves in the basement with canned goods and water, and that it is their only hope. Aunt Meg tells her that she is trying to scare everyone, and Shaggy says that it's working, and that it went from good Halloween scary to bad old regular scary. Agnes tells them to heed the warnings in the fields, and that the end is near, and that tonight Hank Banning will rise from the dead to seek his revenge. Shaggy tells the gang that they do they think the legend is true, and that Hank Banning is coming for revenge, and Velma tells him to relax and that there is no such thing as ghosts. Fred bets that someone is behind all this, but who is it? Daphne suspects Marcy, and Fred tells her why she suspected Marcy and that she's innocent. And Velma also tells her that Marcy is her cousin, and Daphne tells him to call it her women's intuition. 
Fred tells the game that they should split up and look for clues, and that he, Daphne, and Velma will head to the library to do research on the town's history. Well, Shaggy and Scooby head to Agnes's home to see if they can find out anything more about the Hank Bannon ghost story. Shaggy tells them why he can't he and Scooby go to the library, and Fred, Daphne, and Velma interview Agnes. And Velma tells Shaggy that they need to pull every book, magazine, and almanac off the region. Then, they could also need to cross-reference it with the turn-of-the-century folklore. And that they would find it in the micro archives. And when they notice Shaggy and Scooby are gone, Fred tells Velma that he's lost them at book. When Shaggy and Scooby arrive at Agnes' home, they knocked on her door and asked if anyone is home. And... The door opens when Shaggy and Scooby are terrified, and Shaggy tells Scooby to look around, and maybe they could find some clues while searching. Scooby notices Mr. Noodle's cat bowl and eats the food that was on it, and for some reason, Shaggy tells Scooby to check something out, and then they find some gardening tools, and Shaggy also tells Scooby that maybe Agnes is the one behind all of this, and that she's taken it upon herself to make sure Frank Banning's prophecy comes true, and that she's nuttier than a fruitcake. Shaggy tells Scooby that she's right behind them, and Agnes tells them that didn't their mamas teach them to knock before entering. When the cat realizes the food is gone, it growls at them, and Shaggy tells Agnes that this is, a, is not the bakery, and he tells Scooby to get out of here. While at the library, Velma tells Fred and Daphne that there apparently there was a fruit processing plant just outside of town, and that they have been steadily buying up properties over the years. Daphne tells Velma that the cornfields were the patterns, were in the last independently owned fields of the area. And Fred tells the girls that Eldon Reed owns the processing plant. Then Marcy appears and tells them what they are doing here. And Fred tells her that they are doing research. And Marcy tells them that she's studying and that they're making her take electrical engineering in school. Marcy also tells him that she was just on her way home for tonight's masquerade ball. And Fred tells him that it's right and that she's the corn princess and she must be very excited. And Marcy tells him that she guessed it's one way to spend her birthday. And Velma tells him that she didn't know it was her birthday and Marcy tells her that she's 18 and that she's to legally vote. Daphne asks Marcy where was she this morning before she met them in the town square. Marcy tells her that she was at the mall, and that she works part-time at Khaki Corner, and Daphne asks anyone if they can confirm it. Marcy also tells her that the security guard, her assistant manager, and the guy who works at the Pretzel Nation confirms that she was there, and she also said that there was an in-store camera that was on her tape, and Daphne asks her does she have access to the alleged tape. When they watch the tape, Daphne said that they can't even see her face, so that it could be anybody. While in the cornfields, Shaggy said that they're missing Halloween and Vel Velma tells them to relax and that they could still have fun out there. Velma also tells Shaggy that she wants to tell a ghost story, but the others said no. While investigating the cornfields, Shaggy asked them what was rustling and not only they found a scarecrow, but they also found Scooby pretending to be a ghost. And Velma tells Scooby that he scared them to death. Then the scarecrow comes alive and Daffy and told Scooby that they got the joke, but it wasn't Scooby. Then more scarecrows come alive, and Fred told them to run. While they were running, Fred told the gang to head for the old barn. And Velma said that the doors are locked. Just as all hope seemed lost, Scooby hosed the scarecrows with water. And the gang found out that the scarecrows were robots. Suddenly, three robotic scarecrows show up, and Shaggy tells Scooby to get ready for the waterworks and that they have company. When the scarecrows retreated, Shaggy asks the game where they were going, and Velma tells him that whoever's controlling them are sending them somewhere else. Fred tells the others that he has a plan, and he also said that Shaggy and Scooby will go undercover as scarecrows, replacing the two they've short-circuited. Shaggy said that any does anyone else have a plan? And Fred said that he'll be using the They'll be following behind, using the shortwave radio in the mystery machine to figure out where this signal is coming from. And Shaggy tells them to not be shy, 
and just shout it out. And Daffy and tells Shaggy to look at the bright side, and then they'll finally dress up for Halloween. While with the masquerade ball, Marcy asks Curtis what he's supposed to be, and he told her that he's Hong Kong Philly. Marcy doesn't know who it is, and he tells her that he is the number one superhero, and that said the teenagers have no sense of history. Meanwhile, in the cornfield, Shaggy asks Scooby, does he know where they're going, and Scooby said no. In the mystery machine, Velma tells Fred and Daphne that, they, that she knew the signal, and that it was coming from the town hall. At the party, Shaggy, Scooby, and the Scarecrow robots pushed a guy dressed as Sherlock Holmes, and he told them that there's no need to push, and that there is plenty of Halloween fun for everyone. Shaggy tells Scooby that he had a bad feeling about this, and a guy in a lion suit told Shaggy, who he thought was Carl, to meet them by the snack table, and that it's like he doesn't even have a brain. Aunt Meg and Uncle Evan ask the people to give it up for the hottest band in the world, Kiss. Star Child tells them Happy Halloween, and he also tells them to make some noise. While Shot It Loud plays, the ghost of Hank Banning appears, and he told everyone that he returned to seek revenge, and he tells them to prepare for them doom. Spaceman asks Star Child what they would do, and Star Child told him what they to do what they've always done, and that's to keep playing until the cops come. Meanwhile, the Scarecrow robots surround the people, while Shaggy and Scooby drench punch someone. Everybody is running away while Shaggy and Scooby do some apple bobbing and shoot it's them at the Scarecrows. Meanwhile, Fred, Daphne, and Velma throw some pumpkins at the ghost, but to no avail. Shaggy is at a photo booth dressed as a werewolf, while Scooby brings two Scarecrow robots to take the picture with him. After Scooby takes the picture, he shows them Shaggy photo bobbing them, and they went after him. Shaggy was eating some food at the smack table when the two Scarecrow robots started to corner him. Just when all is lost for Shaggy and Scooby, dressed up as a superhero, comes in and shaves, saves Shaggy from them. Fred tells the gang that the ghost of Banning was merely a projection. And Daphne also tells them that whoever is behind this must be inside the projector booth. Fred says that there is no one there. And Daphne tells them who would go to such lengths just to upstage Halloween. Eventually, Velma tells them that she knew who's behind all of this, and they asked, and they had to follow her. Velma also said that if her hunch was right, it was Marcy. Daphne tells them that if she knew it, that anyone who would wear that much eyeshadow is bad news. Uncle Evan asks why Marcy she would do something like this, and Aunt Meg tells her that she is a corn princess, for goodness sake. And Marcy asks them, do they have any idea what today it is, and Aunt Meg tells her that it's Halloween, and Marcy also says that it's also her birthday, and she also tells Aunt Meg how do you, she like it if her birthday was completely overshadowed every year of her life. Velma tells the gang that when Daphne asks who would want to upstage Halloween, and she realized that it had to be Marcy, whose birthday gets upstaged every year. Velma also tells him that it's, it's what she remembered, the video of her at the mall. And Daphne told her that she knew it wasn't her. And Velma told her that it was Marcy. But they, when she remembered seeing the glove they found at the water tower in the background of the footage. Marcy tells her that she just wanted to scare everyone and ruin Halloween, so she wouldn't have, ever have to play second fiddle to do it again. Velma tells the gang that Marcy learned how to build the scarecrows and remote control in her electric engineering class at school. And she also tells them that Marcy used them to create the patterns in the fields, foretelling the return of Hank Banning like the legend predicted. Aunt Meg tells Marcy that it's their fault and that she couldn't believe she they let a holiday come before Marcy's birthday. The sheriff tells them see, that nobody got hurt and that nothing Marcy did was technically illegal. They can arrange for Marcy to make up for it with community service. When Shaggy sees Kiss, he shows his tattooed forehead to them before one of the members give Shaggy a thumbs up. Star Child tells Marcy that she hopes that she's learned her lesson from all of this and that he knows he has. And he wants to know who does he talk to about getting paid. Marcy tells Fred that she'll be out in 300 hours before winking at him. Daffy tells Fred that this was the best Halloween ever. 
and Shaggy reminds them that it's still Halloween night and they have time to go trick-or-treating. When they return, Scooby is dressed up as Shaggy, while Shaggy is dressed up as Scooby. And that Shaggy has no idea he was so handsome and the gang all laugh. While in the mystery machine heading home, Shaggy tells Scooby that he can't eat one more piece of candy and Scooby tells him that he can't eat either, so they both eat it anyway. Fred tells the gang that this was sure a memorable Halloween. But when they see Marcy, Daphne tells her to see you next year. She asks them do they think that orange was really her color. And Velma told her that Marcy always had a wild imagination. And she also said, a guy who has been dead for a hundred years coming back to seek his revenge? As if anyone believes such a silly story. And the gang laughed. Scooby looks at the black cat laughing evilly before his eyes turn red and disappears. And Scooby says Scooby Dooby Doo in confusion to end this special. Did you know that? This episode is full of homages to the franchise. It includes a laugh track. At the start of the episode, the case of the gang is solving is similar to the one in which which is which from the first season, Scooby Doo, where are you? The werewolf disguise Shaggy uses to trick the scarecrows is the same as his werewolf form from the television film Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. His performance shouted out loud, singing the title continuously after the first verse. Curtis dresses up as Hong Kong Fooey, another Hanna-Barbera animated anthropomorphic dog who fights crime. He is also on Scooby's scooby Doobies team in the TV series Laugh Olympics. Eldon Reed and another guy are dressed as John Watson and Sherlock Holmes, respectively. There's a Wizard of Oz reference in, as a person costume as the cowardly, cowardly lion tells Shaggy in disguise as one of the scarecrows. Carl, I thought we told you to meet us by the snack table. Honestly, it's sometimes it's like you don't even have a brain. In the background are the Tin Man and Dorothy Gale. When they are in Scarecrow disguise, Shaggy says to Scooby, I've got a bad feeling about this. This is a Star Wars catchphrase which has become quite ubiquitous in popular culture and it crops up in the Scooby-verse from time to time. And during the chase sequence, Scooby-Doo dresses up in a Superman costume. In 2012, Scholastic published Scooby-Doo, A Haunted Halloween, with comic book style panels. Now you know! So we give Scooby-Doo's Halloween special a perfect 5 out of 5 perfection. This episode's rating is a perfect 10 out of 10. Next time, get animany and totally insane <laughs>